So hello and welcome to the Refreshing Views Garden. This is the ZWO AM3. We actually reviewed it in the last video. We did the unboxing, we got it all set up. And what we're gonna to do today in this video is talk through some of the improvements I've made to the original bundle we got from First Light Optics. And then we're gonna do some observing. So make sure you stay to the end because we're going to track a comet out in the depths of the solar system. And then we're gonna dive into the Virgo galaxy cluster where it's so rich, it's so full of galaxies. The field of view is so full of galaxies. It's actually easier to galaxy hop than it is to star hop. Now the benefits of the AM3 mount are that it's a really robust performer, particularly if you've got gusty, windy conditions, it's really stable. Plus the head only weighs four kilograms and it's on this lightweight carbon fiber tripod and it doesn't need any counterweights. So you've got this really lightweight, but yet really robust performer. So that's great if you've got a setup in the garden, in the backyard, every time you want to observe, or if you go to star parties, or even if you use it for overseas travel, where every kilogram and every cubic inch in your suitcase and your packing case is important. So I'm finding this a really good, lightweight, yet effective choice. So not only is it easy to set up, you know, easy to carry, but more importantly, when you're fatigued in the small hours, when you've got to carry everything back in, having a mount that you can literally pick up and carry back in is so important. So really enjoying use it. I've used it for solar observing, live stack in the deep sky, visual observing, really enjoyed using it. So when we did the unboxing in the last video and we got it all set up, a few of you spotted some of the changes I've made from the original bundle that we got sent by First Light Optics. So what I'll do is I'll talk you through some of those I've made, and that's with a view to improving its usability and also keeping an eye on that total weight. because so I want to use this as an overseas, as an overseas traveling telescope where every kilogram, every cubic inch is really important. So if you read the article I wrote for Astronomy Now, if you've seen the last video, you know I really liked the performance of this mount. So much so that I've actually bought it with my own money. So this isn't a sponsored review. There's no paid endorsement. This is my own money, my own hard-earned money that I spent on the mount. So it did have some shortcomings that I pointed out. So the first thing was the original tripod, the TC40 tripod from ZWO, I found was really low. And particularly using a fractor when the eyepiece is down low, I just couldn't get my eye down to it. Couldn't get my eye down to it comfortably. So I've actually swapped the tripod. I've sent the tripod back and I've used my Irinel RT90C tripod, that's my carbon fibre tripod. That's the one I bought for the winter star party. And that's the one you're going to see when I eventually get round to editing all the footage from Florida. So it's a lightweight carbon fibre tripod, but the beauty of it, it's got more leg extension. So you can bring the telescope up, bring the tripod up higher. So it's therefore easier to get to the eyepiece. So the Irinor tripod, the one I've changed it to, yes, it does weigh more, but it is a lightweight carbon fibre tripod in its own right. Um, but having that longer legs, the longer tripod legs, means that you can actually have the telescope at a more comfortable height. So of course, if you're imaging, you want a low stable mount. So it's not really that important having a tall tripod, but certainly for visual use and being able to switch, you know, between the camera or an eyepiece, having a taller tripod, I find it was really beneficial. Downside, of course, you know, it's a bit more of an expensive mount. Plus, of course, it weighs a little bit more because you've got a longer leg inside the tripod. The other important thing is that because this is a photographic tripod, it doesn't have the spreader plate that goes in here, uh, the bit in there that doesn't hold it apart. So I've got to force the tripod legs, make sure they're in the right place. Um, and maybe one day I'll 3D print something that goes in there. Um, but I haven't got round to that yet. So be aware of that. This is a photographic tripod, so it's taller, but you don't get the spreader plate and it weighs a little more. But it does give you that taller height, which makes observing through the eyepiece much more comfortable. And here's a tip for you. This is what I've done on mine. I've got some luminous tape, I've ordered it online, but put some luminous tape around the tripod legs. It means that when you're observing at night, you can actually see where your tripod is if you're at a dark site. Um, and then more importantly, if you're observing with other people, they then don't walk into or trip over your tripod. So a little bit of luminous tape around the legs just makes it easier to see. That glows away for, well, for hours. Uh, it doesn't affect your night vision as well. It's such a gentle glow. So the next change I made is with the pier. And a few of you with sharp eyes spotted that I changed the pier part of the way through the video. So I have the original solid tubed PE200 and I've actually swapped it for the lighter PE160. I think that's pier extension, 160 millimeters. So the weight I've gained by using it all a tripod, I've then saved by having the lighter pier. So the tripod's gone back 
and the original pier has gone back and I swapped it for the lighter pier and for the taller tripod. So one of the things I really enjoyed from the original bundle was having a canvas tray. Well, you can't see the canvas tray. Down there. So one of the things I really enjoyed from having the original uh, equipment from the original bundle was having the canvas tray. So I actually went out and researched and bought my own canvas tray. And again, that was for my setup to go to Florida. And the one I bought actually has more pockets. So it has little things so you can then you know, put things like your baton off mask inside the little pockets and then that just lives in here so all the accessories all live in there along with a little dandelion leaf and quite a few of you in the comments have also pointed out the benefit of putting you know some sort of counterweights or water bottles inside the tripod tray and that reduces that center of gravity with a telescope on the top a light head and a light carbon fiber tripod, you do have that weight at the top. So putting some weights, counterweights, water bottles in the tray is really useful to lower that center of gravity, stops the risk of it toppling over. So what we're gonna do next then, we'll show you the telescope in use, live stat this comet, this comet that's out in the depths of the solar system. And then we're gonna to go to the core of the Virgo galaxy cluster. So you'll be able to see the telescope in use. So hopefully you can see me in the gloom. Uh, we've got the telescope set up facing north. Uh, but it doesn't, the mount doesn't have a poloscope, so you can't align the mount sort of visually or optically. You've got to use you know, drift alignment or software tools. So I'm going to get the telescope focus. We've got the camera with the star field just starting to appear. I've got a manually focus so that you know, all the faint stars appear, so I know I'm sort of 99% focused. I'm then going to uh, use the software tools, the tool in SharpCap, to do the polar alignment because of course we can't do it optically you can't do it by looking through the map so we're just going to get focus focusing now what we're going to do is go tools polar align uh, read instructions we know we're roughly facing north uh, so click next and next and what we're going to do is then tilt the telescope to the side and it measures the error between where it should be pointing if it was polar aligned or where it's actually pointing. Right, let's... Yeah, it's about 90 degrees. So on the screen you can see we've got the numbers behind us. What we've got to do is get these close to zero as we possibly can. So we're going to twiddle the screws at the back of the mountain and adjust how far up and down the altitude and how left and right it is the azimuth. Just get these numbers as close to zero as you can. The nearer to zero you are, the better your polar alignment is. So of course we're only live stacking, we only do short exposures and for visual aid, you know, so good, in, good is good enough, you know, good, the best is the enemy of the good. But of course, if you're imaging, you want to get this as close to zero as you can. So I'll try and do that. And there's the left and right. Oh, well right, polar alignment is excellent. We are excellent. So we're ready to move on then. So what I'm going to do now is go to De Nebula, which is the brightest or nearby star to Virgo. That's where we're going to look. We've got the comet and the galaxy cluster are both in Virgo. So we're going to go to De Nebula, it's bright star, and then we're going to do our focus. Go to Nebula. Oh, well. So this is my 3D printed uh, what's called a batten off mask and what it does it's got these sort of diffraction spikes and we're going to get a nice sort of butterfly shape in the field of view when we put this over when we're looking at a bright star. So the objective here is to get that diffraction pattern as symmetrical as we possibly can. And I just do that manually just by looking at the pattern on the star field and uh, looking at the pattern on the screen. And the most important thing of all is you've got to remember to remove it afterwards, otherwise you're 
you know, you're cutting your telescope field of view down to a tiny, tiny amount. So do remember <laughs> to take your baton off mask. I can't imagine how I possibly know that as a way of working. Okay, so we've got the star nice and sharp now. We've got that diffraction spike absolutely perfect. So we know we're polar aligned. And we know we've got a good focus. So we're now going to do a go to and go and find this comet. Now, the I'm just using my phone, which is behind me on my squeaky chair. So I'm just using the phone, which is the which is the app, the ASI app to control the mount. You can do it through the computer as well. It's got the ASCOM drive. I just haven't got around to doing that yet. So I've got my phone also. So I've got my phone set up, ready to do the go-tos. So let's go to the comet. How cool is that? So I've got a comet and we've got a tawny owl at the same time. That is so cool. I love about this setup. I've got this comet, this icy comet, this body. It's out beyond the orbit of Mars somewhere, out in the depths of the solar system. You can see it. And of course, there's a faint, oh, you can't quite see that. Let me adjust the camera down. Next to the comet, it looks like there's a little faint galaxy as well. So I have to look up what that one is as well. So we've got a comet and a galaxy in the same field of view. And we've got that owl in the background as well. So we've got an owl in the you know, hunting somewhere in the fields near us. Plus I've got a comet, plus I've got a galaxy. So I'm totally really enjoying this. This is such a cool experience. Right, we're going to say goodbye to the comet now. We're going to say goodbye to the solar system. We're going to travel out way beyond the solar system, way beyond the Milky Way and into intergalactic space. We're going to go to the core of the Virgo galaxy cluster. So behind me, we've got the Virgo cluster in the galaxy. They're about, I don't know, I think it's like 40 to 60 million light years away, depending which galaxy it is in the cluster. But that is so cool. I so say again, I'm using a small portable telescope and I can not only see the galaxies, I can actually see features inside the galaxies. Now I've seen these from a dark sky site. You can see these through a pair of binoculars, but obviously nothing like this. That's why I'm so enjoying this sharp cap, this live stacking, being able to see these features, being able to see these details through what is a small portable telescope. Now this particular part of the Virgo galaxy cluster, because it is quite a big structure, it's called Markarian's chain. Markarian was a Georgian astronomer. That's Georgia the country, not Georgia the state. And he proved that these galaxies were actually all part of the same cluster, that they had the common distance, they had the common motion, and they really were physically a true gravitational cluster. They weren't just a line of sight effect or just a chance alignment. He proved that they were all, you know, traveling through space together, physically together. So. That's so cool, isn't it? Be able to see features inside these galaxy clusters. And again, that's with a small, portable, easy to carry telescope. Right, so we have seen an icy comet uh, out in the depths of the solar system. We've seen a physical galaxy cluster, you know, out in 
uh, across intergalactic space. And that tawny owl is still here. We can still hear him sometimes in the background. Whew, what a night. It's now about midnight. I've got work tomorrow, so I'm going to have to sign off now. And the best thing about this is going to pick up the whole telescope as one and just put it back up in the shed. So it's literally just the one pickup. So I wish you a good night. And uh, as always, yes, if you don't want me to work anymore and produce these videos more often, then have a look at the Patreon account. That means I wouldn't have to go to work tomorrow. I could do more of these videos. So my thanks again to Rashpal for his support. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video when we're out exploring the night sky.